Yeah, I can see some oily residue. What about... Look at all of the coking on the edges, holy cow. Enough. I mean... That'll do, man, enough. Why is there no compression in Cylinder 4? Yeah, it is just gonzo. I think the engine is just toast, Vlad. That would explain the smoke, the poor acceleration. You know what? I know a certain trick that we should have tried much earlier. I suggest we give it a clean and attempt to restore it. See the fellows. Here is a simple method for cleaning an engine. Plenty of people have been suggesting we try it. And uh, this right here is copper sulfate. We've just assessed the condition of the engine, how it runs. And uh, we can use this compound to try and fix that engine. As for how we feed it in, instead of various chemical reactions, we're going to be using this here lovely humidifier. We'll make a highly concentrated copper sulfate solution and attempt to restore this engine. Okay, let's see where this goes. Now, before we get started, we need to make a highly concentrated copper sulfate solution. We are keeping things simple and old-fashioned. We have a big pot, we'll pour some water into it. Then we'll place a second pot, it's also going to contain water. This is what you'd call a water bath. We'll be slowly warming the water up. The process will be more intense in here and less so in here. And in this hot water, we will slowly be dissolving the copper sulfate. With the preparation that we're doing, this is definitely going to work. Once we achieve a concentration where the copper sulfate is no longer dissolving in the warm water, that'll mean the solution is ready. Okay, so we've been adding more and more into the mix. And the overall amount is actually in excess of one and a half kilos of copper sulfate. And it is no longer dissolving. Here you'll see the crystals from the bottom of the pot. And so that tells us we've made a highly concentrated solution. And this is what we're going to use to... heal that engine. So start the car, feed in the vaporized copper sulfate. Yeah, start the engine, and it's going to be running for about 8 hours. This is not a quick procedure, but they say the results are going to be awesome. Okay, let's get to it. And we better strain it before pouring it into the thing. Pour it right in. How much does it hold? 3.6 liters. Also quite a bit, actually. Okay, we've filled up the humidifier, and look at this. It comes into contact with zinc, the solution. And immediately it makes it dark. And we should be seeing copper deposits. Yeah, it is leaving copper residue, but that just wipes right off. Yeah, that's indeed a highly concentrated copper sulfate solution. Okay, load it in. And place it in the car. All right, we've got everything installed. Here we have the humidifier and intake pipe. The steam is going to be fed right in. Okay, go ahead and start the engine and let's see how this works. The engine is a bit cold, no big deal. And it works, we're looking good. We've brought the revs up a tiny bit. And now it's time to fire up the humidifier. So the process we're witnessing, this isn't producing as much steam as water would. Because obviously the fluid is heavier, it's more difficult to turn it into steam. In any case, this is producing steam, it's all good. And it's going right into the intake manifold. Now we just leave it alone. 
allow it to do its thing, clean out the engine, while we wait. After two, three, four hours. So check this out, guys. It's only been four and a half hours, and uh, oh, what a miracle, the engine has crapped out. It stalled, we can't start it back up, and we have no idea what the problem is. Give it a turn. That'll do. And it's turning as if there's a lack... I mean, you can hear that it has no compression. There is a bit in one or maybe one and a half cylinders. The other is, well, the pistons are moving up and down, but nothing else is happening. Now, I'm curious to find out what happened, and we're about to investigate together with you guys. But even at a quick glance, I mean, look here. When we first ran the humidifier on just regular water, it was generating a lot of steam. But once we poured in the concentrated solution, I mean, when it's just water, it creates a steam screen, which is a cool thing to behold. But when we ran it on the copper sulfate solution, there wasn't quite as much steam. At first, we thought it was just the water escaping without the copper sulfate, but that is not the case. Just look at this intake pipe that was ingesting the air. That's quite a lot of copper sulfate buildup. Yeah, it's quite a thick layer, isn't it? Initially, we thought this is totally normal, because we have tried using copper sulfate in various other applications, and it always worked well. We even tried adding it to fuel. And the results of that experiment were quite positive. It would seem... like it's going down the same road, but the engine stalled for whatever reason. And while turning over, it sounds as if there is no compression. The initial assumption was that it would increase, but let's see what the actual situation is. All right, let's see what's up with cylinder one. Turn it. Oh, for real? Turn it some more. Enough. I can't tell you how much that is, but it is not a lot. How much is that? Like two? One? <laughs> Let's call it one. Oh, there's some compression in here, but keep turning it. Till the bitter end. Enough. How much is that? Oh, well, holy cow, seven and a half, amazing. Impressive. Hit it. That's enough. That is eight. That's enough. Three and change. Almost four. Okay, I mean, uh, let's write that down. 3.8. And, uh, I don't even know what to tell him. The engine has failed. So as we can see, the compression has dropped pretty severely. It is much lower than before. But the water, though it wasn't exactly what you'd call pure, it's supposed to find its way inside, making any deposits softer and cleaning them out. And uh, that might have been the case. But some other process might have also been occurring. But no use speculating, instead let's grab a camera and have a look. I am very curious as to what could have happened. Before we would have seen everything smothered in oil, as for right now, well... Uh, yes, there were definitely deposits and sludge in there. But let's have a look at what the situation is right now. I am very curious and... Uh, oh, holy cow. Everything is covered in the stuff. 
to the point of getting clogged. It's all got that interesting coloration. As for the piston, it looks pretty... I mean, I think it became cleaner. Or the deposits were burned off. What are those spots? What is that? I'd imagine it's copper sulfate on the edge of the piston. Look at that weird buildup. It definitely wasn't there before. What is that? What the hell? What is that? What am I looking at? What the... What is that? Some sort of evidence of life? I don't get it. Apparently, that's the copper sulfate buildup. It must have found this to be a nice environment then. Holy moly. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty... suspicious. Oh, wow, but what is that? Looks like the copper sulfate decided to stick around on the head, valve seats, the valves themselves. That is quite a lot of buildup. Of course the engine would refuse to run. And here we are looking for compression. It appears as if the valves are stuck. Though not necessarily. The intake valves. Or it could be the exhaust side. But the really interesting thing is... This is a bad situation, I mean. The stuff has built up on the cylinder head, the valves. And it somehow found its way onto the seats. But then, yeah, it was coming through there, so... But a camera image isn't going to give you the full picture. And so I suggest we remove the cylinder head, flip it upside down, and uh, see what the actual situation is with the build-up and whatnot. Getting a proper visual is much better than seeing something on a screen. So let's remove the head and have a look. Okay, we've removed the head, and what do we got? Well, no surprise it would find its way in here, but what can I even tell you? I'm not sure what... In every cylinder... What are these deposits? That is an impressive layer. Holy cow. Yeah, I can't tell what this green stuff is. What the hell is that? Has it converted into some green substance? Because of the gasoline? What color is oxidized copper? Green? When it gets warm. Even that what is on the floor. So, look, this was contaminated with coolant. But we see some green substance, which we suspect might be copper which has oxidized. It's too bad the coolant found its way in there. But let's turn the head over and see what's going on. me, there's a ton of it. Holy f***ing shit. So here's the interesting thing. All of that has built up. I mean, some areas do seem to be cleaner, but that's probably because of the water. As for what the copper sulfate has done for us, well, I'm about to show you. I don't even know how to describe it, honestly. In other applications it worked rather well, but once we fed it using a humidifier, well, uh, see for yourselves. Cylinder 1, we were surprised why there was no compression, and so look. Here I am slowly forcing the valve open. Carefully. And uh, what is this now? That is not supposed to be there. So this stuff was building up. And I was expecting to see some buildup on the valve stem as well. 
But in fact, it's clean more or less. But the part of the valve that comes into contact with the cylinder head, well, you can see it covered in spots, and it just wasn't shutting properly because of that stuff. And apparently it's the same situation everywhere else. I mean, these might be the old deposits that have come loose, but it doesn't look like it to me. Yeah, I highly doubt it. But yeah, this stuff just does not work. Copper sulfate is a fun compound, but in this sort of situation you're looking at an engine teardown 100%. So there's really no point even. And that's it for this video, catch you guys later.